I pay tribute to the troop and police contributing countries, namely Burundi, Djibouti, Ethiopia, Kenya, Nigeria, Ghana, Uganda, and Zambia, and to the thousands of young African men and women who paid the ultimate price to restore peace and stability in Somalia out of African solidarity. With the leading elements of our first contingent landing in, in Mogadishu on the 6th of March 2007. We in the region would continue to shed our blood, pay immense sacrifice, and do whatever is just and necessary to restore the long sought after peace and tranquility in Somalia and across the region. We will continue to work closely with the federal government, the regions, and the international community in the quest to secure peace and prosperity for Somalia and for this and other and many generations to come. That progress has required exceptionally hard work and great sacrifice, not least from the troop contributing countries to the Amazon mission. We want Somalia to play its role in the region as it used to do in the past. And we want to see Somalia living in harmony with the Islamic world, the world, the Arabs, and with our region. We would like to take this opportunity also to thank the troop contributed countries who are, who are losing their beloved people here, you know, because of Somalia stability. Whoever was here in 2007 when we came in and comes back today cannot recognize the place. Thanks to the courageous and selfless service of the men and women of Amisom, I want to pay tribute to them. The African Union is such an important organization, such an important partner, and when Africa is united, anything can be achieved. Somalis will never turn back to its difficult past. The fall of President Siad Barre's government in 1991 had turned Somalia into a failed state, presenting a humanitarian catastrophe worse than elsewhere in the world. A nation of a lot of displaced people coming from uh, the other regions because of the insecurity, because of the famine, because of the hunger, because of the sickness, no hospital. Oh, it was the hell. The UN reports that between 1991 and 1993, over half of the estimated 4.5 million population suffered severe malnutrition, leaving 300,000 people dead. 500,000 others died as a result of the conflict, while 1 million Somalis sought refuge in neighboring countries. Many others clustered in Mogadishu and other parts of south-central Somalia were losing hope. Some prayed for divine intervention to end the carnage and hostilities, while many of them wondered whether anyone anywhere in the world truly cared about what was taking place in this Horn of African country. As member states of the African Union gathered in Addis Ababa to find a lasting solution to the Somali conflict in January 2007, hope for restoration of stability was on the horizon. And in March the same year, the African Union mission in Somalia, AMISOM, intervened in the crisis amidst brutal killings, heavy gunfire, grenade and mortar explosions, abduction and starvation, all caused by the prolonged civil war between rival warlords, militias and Al-Shabaab militants. I pay tribute to the troop and police contributing countries, namely Burundi, Djibouti, Ethiopia, Kenya, Nigeria, Ghana, Uganda, and Zambia, and to the thousands of young African men and women who paid the ultimate price to restore peace and stability in Somalia out of African solidarity. For those who are here, this experience will forever be a testimony. Really, whoever was here in 2007 when we came in and comes back today cannot recognize the place. The war was being fought at the port. The war was being fought here at the airport. The war was being fought at Villa Somalia. There was nowhere to hide. Every place was dangerous. 
I remember Mogadishu, uh, when Shabab controlled half of Mogadishu. Amisom had no helicopters, no night vision systems, and armored cars that could be penetrated by the weapons of Shabab. And Amisom soldiers, women and men, were fighting, and Amisom police were fighting to protect our global security. These violent extremists were everywhere. They were controlling almost everything. They were collecting taxes in the streets of Mogadishu. And today, they are hidden. The African body was created by the African Union's Peace and Security Council in early 2007 with an initial six-month mandate. It was tasked to support the transitional governmental structures, implement a national security plan, train the Somali security forces, and also assist in creating a secure environment for the delivery of humanitarian aid besides battling Al-Shabaab militants. Since then, its mandates have been renewed regularly by the African Union Peace and Security Council and authorized by the United Nations Security Council and the UN several resolutions. Uganda was the first country to respond to Somalia's call by deploying its forces in one of the largest missions the African Union, AU, runs on the continent. With the leading elements of our first contingent, landing in, in Mogadishu on the 6th of March 2007. Many observers were convinced that our effort was hopeless, if not suicidal. We were, however, confident of the correctness and feasibility of our decision. These brave forces are now working alongside a force of about 22,000 troops and over 500 police personnel from other troop and police contributing countries of Burundi, Ethiopia, Djibouti, Kenya, Nigeria, Sierra Leone and Ghana. But by 2009, Amisom was conducting an urban warfare against Al-Shabaab and has over the years morphed into a broader counter-insurgency and stabilization campaign conducted across vast swaths of the countryside and many urban settlements. Despite years of bloody fighting and the number of casualties on the military side, a general assessment of AMISOM reflects its achievements and the importance of this AU-led peace enforcement operation in the quest for the stability of Somalia. The Somali government moved from exile in Kenya, where it had been based, to Mogadishu since 2007. The Somalia of 2016 is different from the Somalia of 2007 when we first established the African Union mission in Somalia. At the time there was, there was no peace to talk about. Al-Shabaab controlled more than 80% or 95% of South Central Somalia. Even within Mogadishu, I mean we, had, we were literally sharing Mogadishu with Al-Shabaab. But their continued effort has enabled us to be able to break out of Mogadishu established liberated areas in South Central Somalia and ensuring that there is, uh, there is peace that has been developing. The government institutions are there. Markets have opened. Business is booming. Hospitals, schools are working and functioning. Ministers are appointed. People are traveling and coming back. But today, Al-Shabaab has been driven back across Somalia such that no, they no longer pose an existential threat to the country. International efforts to tackle piracy have helped to ensure that until March this year, there'd been no attacks at sea for five years. The fact that we were able to hold the elections at the parliament level and at the presidential level, whereby the defeated uh, uh, candidates accept that defeat and the elections go ahead, and all this is progress. Amisom has a big role in the community. In terms of security, if they were not here, we wouldn't have even held the election in the regions. So those six regions, if it was not guarded by Amisom, we wouldn't have been there. So Amisom was a big help, is a big help in terms of security and uh, watching the country's uh, progress and development. AMISOM has also played a very key role in the capacity building and mentoring of the Somali National Armed Forces and other Somali security forces. 
Somalia is slowly but steadily regaining the form of a functioning state. Many of Somalia's political, security and economic gains over the past decade cannot be understood without Amisom, which has restored stability and hope to the people of Somalia. As a result of all this, Mogadishu and other urban centers are witnessing an improvement in the security realm, despite cowardly asymmetric attacks and intimidation of locals in some parts of the country. The major countries which have troops operating in Chupalan are Kenya, Ethiopia and Burundi. As you can see, there is a reliable security in town. You can walk during the night. We all work together on this and things are improving. I think if you look now to uh, Mogadishu City uh, from 2012 up and 2015 or 16, you, you can find a you know, big difference because now life is coming back. All the diaspora people are coming back. Now we are here in Bondere and I think it's the time is 10 o'clock in the evening, in the night time. I remember five, six years ago, no one can stand here. And now we are coming the video and we're talking, we bring the water because the, the people in the city, they are back. Amisom as a multi-dimensional peace support operation comprising of the military, police and the civilian personnel have helped the country make impressive gains by demonstrating how an African mission can respond to the needs and demands of this once beautiful nation. For the last 10 years, it has liberated over 80% of south-central Somalia from Al-Shabaab through the launch of several military campaigns that have brought sudden and unexpected progress, paving way for the opening up of the main supply routes and the delivery of humanitarian aid. This effort has once again been renewed at high-profile meetings between AMISOM and the federal government of Somalia. Now the new government is established. Now we are trying to secure the main supply routes. And we want to get rid the remnants of the Ashabab in the rural area. Until now, the battle to liberate more areas from Al Shabab continues. The areas that we captured in 2015 are mainly three locations. These are Bardere, which is here, Dinsu, which is here, and Kudai, a coastal port that used to be used by Al-Shabaab. In 2016, we captured Abdali Berole, which occupies a central key node along uh, Kismayu, Badade, Kolbio, MSR, and also Mirtugo in sector 5, which is between El Barav and Beokade. The Amisom military has also facilitated and supported the Somali National Army, its intelligence units and other security agencies in other combat missions carried out in several major urban centers. Zero 03, this is zero 02. Mashallah, I have no over. We opened a, a training camp uh, called a train, a training camp of Degabadani. So at the end of the year, we want to check them whether uh, Amisom trained enough soldiers that can take the security of the country. This year alone from January, we have received a total of 37 Ashabab militants, majority of whom have surrendered with weapons. We have captured a total of 117 assorted weapons, recovered 1,568 assorted ammunition. In counter IED efforts, we have managed to defeat most of the IEDs. And in this case, from January to now, we have recovered a total of 100 IEDs along the MSRs. On top of that, 
Amazon boasts over the creation of other states formed as a result of their military campaigns, such as the Juba Land State, the Interim Southwest State of Somalia, the Hirshabele State, and Gal Gadud State. However, such achievements have been dogged down by some major hurdles. Our biggest uh, challenge is uh, an enemy that uh, we can't see. When you don't see the enemy, you can't direct all your capacities to neutralizing it. The Ashabab, uh, instead of uh, uh, confronting us, it melted with the population. And what it did, it decided to change uh, to asymmetric uh, war. And his weapon, he decided to do VBIDs and suicide bombs and uh, EIDs. That is why we propose long jump operations to eliminate them by surprise attacks. It is better than giving them extended holidays without any punishment for their mistakes and allowing them to create liberated areas by default. The area is expansive and uh, there are no proper roads in Somalia and therefore escorting convoys is a challenge. Other challenges yet to be confronted by AMISOM include the need to strengthen the weak and almost non-existent political institutional apparatus and the necessity to deal with the complexity of the clan-based politics in most self-governed structures of power. On its part, the AMISOM police component with strength of 540 police officers, both the individual and formed police units, has the mandate to engage in the capacity building of the Somali federal and state police to transform it into a credible body that can provide security for its population. Their achievements so far in skilling up the Somali police force to the internationally acceptable standards are well documented. Amazon provided training, and this is basic police training, as well as specialized police training to approximately 6,000 police officers. We also assisted in development of police stations in newly recovered areas of Mahas, Doble, Kadale, and other areas like Jalalaxi and elsewhere. We also provided logistical support to these police stations and to the police itself in terms of vehicles, equipment, furniture for them to perform their functions. We have police officers deployed at the Joint Operations Command Center in Mogadishu. These mentors are there to assist the Somali police develop their skills in monitoring the 42 CCTV cameras that's placed in Mogadishu itself for them to monitor them and provide rapid response to incidents that they pick up on the CCTV cameras. And as any success story would be, the challenges faced by the police component are enormous. Our biggest challenge currently is there's no political direction or policy in terms of the establishment of the federal and state police with what is required in terms of their roles responsibilities and functions. With our current deployments and our current activities, we are too little in numbers to be all over and assist the Somali police in all areas. There's a great need for us to increase our numbers so we can expand our operations. Meanwhile, the civilian component is mandated to assist in the rebuilding of Somalia's legitimate and effective political institutions. Its role is fundamental in the process since it is unlikely that AMISOM's military or police-oriented strategy will succeed without an effective and strong civilian component. We have been able to repair a number of bridges, one in Belletwini and one in Awelea-Win. And these are critical bridges that link, link uh, communities together and are uh, able to allow for flow, flow of traffic. We have been able to build uh, schools that uh, now house over 700 children. So we have been able to reach out to the communities where we uh, in the recovered areas and to talk to their youth to explain to them the importance of accepting peace. We are supporting the government to make sure that you know the country which has been torn apart with differences 
is reconciled. We are also supporting the government to make sure that institutions that collapse are restored. We have been involved in training public servants so that they can be able to gain capacity and be able to serve appropriately. We have supported uh, institutions like the legislature and the regional assemblies so that they can be able to legislate and work closely with the public service, with the security, so that the institutions are all working in tandem and restore the politics and institution for the state. In this sense, AMISOM's support has been very helpful in mobilizing and bringing all actors together, including women, youth, children, traditional and religious elders, as well as civil society leaders. It also encompasses a humanitarian aspect which is limited to a facilitation role of aiding the movement and distribution of humanitarian assistance. <laughs> However, despite some cynical attitude towards AMISOM, their presence has been commended by many who have seen them through the tough times in the last 10 years. Without AMISOM, Somalia would not be where it is today. This mission has provided the stability needed to lay the foundations of democracy in Somalia. I visited Somalia several times escorted by AMISOM. And I have seen the precarious conditions in which AMISOM soldiers were not only protecting the Somali people, but they were protecting our global security. I want to pay tribute to them. One partner I would like to dedicate special gratitude is AMSOM. Their, their peacekeepers have been working with us for 10 years, much longer anyone expected, in the quest to help Somalis defeat al-Shabaab and rebuild our security forces. I know that Kenya, Uganda, Ethiopia, Burundi and Djibouti have taken heavy casualties in the fight against al-Shabaab, as indeed have Somali security forces. But your commitment to the Amazon mission has been fundamental to the progress that has been made. I would like to take this opportunity also to thank the true contributed countries who are, who are losing their beloved people here, you know, because of Somali stability. As Somalis, and particularly a military person, I see those 10 years as having brought considerable progress to my country. They have done a good job, literally considering uh, the level of the challenges that this country has been facing in terms of you know, resources Amazon can get. Similarly, the European Union has remained one of the most consistent support to Amazon and the AU, and we appreciate its remarkable and dedicated support. The European Union will remain fully committed to supporting Somalia's efforts in all of these domains to ensure a smooth and successful transition to a safer, more prosperous and peaceful future for all. We also command the UK and the USA for their assistance to Somalia. We in the region would continue to shed our blood, pay immense sacrifice and do whatever is just and necessary to restore the long sought after peace and tranquility in Somalia and across the region. We will continue to work closely with the federal government the regions and the international community in the quest to secure peace and prosperity for Somalia and for this and other and many generations to come. We want Somalia to play its role in the region as it used to do in the past and we want to see Somalia living in harmony with the Islamic world, the world, the Arabs and with our region. I reassure you that under my leadership, the African Union mission in Somalia, AMISOM, will continue to endeavor to reduce the threats posed by the terrorist El Shabaab and also apply the African Union's policy of zero tolerance to the violation of human rights. The African Union is such an important organization, such an important partner, and when Africa is united, Anything can be achieved. So AMISOM is part of and parcel of an African solution to an African problem. Their sacrifices will not go in vain. AMISOM understands stabilization as the multi-dimensional process of extending administrative authority to the federal government of Somalia. It's however very clear to them that they are not an occupation force, but one playing a supportive role 
and when it's time to leave, they'll transfer ownership of the process to the federal government of Somalia before the planned exit strategy. We do not come here to replace the Somalis in governing this place. We came here because we believe that a peaceful and a democratic Somalia is an asset for the African Union agenda. So Somalia's forces need to be built up rapidly through a federated model that also brings in regional forces. It is true, we don't have much time. We need to move fast to ensure that this country is not sustained by Amisom. But if we live today, we will place the country in a situation whereby all the successes that we have scored might be reversed. Therefore, Somalia and Amisom forces will require urgent additional support in, term, in terms of predictable and sustainable funding, logistic, force enabler and force multipliers. We know that Amisom are overstretched and that troop contributing countries simply cannot be expected to carry the burden of Somalia's security forever. So because of that, we have to go home one day. We have said 2018 as a commencement of the drawdown of AMISOM, whose exit strategy must be based on clear criteria. We should strive to establish the necessary conditions to enable AMISOM exit. But does everyone agree to their departure? We should not talk about exit, timelines and dates, but looking at how we can increase the capacity of the Somali National Armed Forces, how we can accelerate proper force development within the Somali Armed Forces and other security forces so that we create an environment whereby the Somali security forces are able to fully assume responsibility over Somalia's uh, security, law and order, its integrity and sovereignty. We see it as not that is, you have been overstayed, but we see it that uh, you have invested so much, sacrificed so much and still uh, the need that you came to Somalia is still there. Amisom believes that Somalia needs political leaders who can reverse the public's negative perception of state governance and also needs a government that will improve the social, political and economic institutions that will unite Somalis and direct allegiance to the government. I was humbled by the enormous public support I received following the election. I am, however, very aware of the high expectations the Somali people have for me, starting with improved security and provision of basic services such as health and education. Amisom also hopes that the Somali federal government's relationship with the self-declared autonomous regions of Somaliland and Jubaland must strike a balance between Somalis and regional actors to be able to address all historical grievances. Thank you.